Hello everyone and welcome back to the Worth the Watch podcast, the only movie podcast on YouTube. So, so, what are we talking about today? I don't know, but I thought you, I thought you knew. Oh yeah, I do. I was just trying to make banter. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we talking about then, if, if you know? Okay, I know. So we just saw... A movie, <clears throat> a movie called Ocean's Eight. Ocean's Eight. Mm-hmm. Who did Ocean eat? <laughs> Spoilers. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to get into that just yet. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we saw this film, Ocean's Eight, remake of a remake. A um, remake of a. Is it a spoiler to say it's a remake? Um. It's. Uh, uh, I just realized it's going to get the Baileys like going like. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we're drinking Baileys today. Yep. Not sponsored. No. Nah. They didn't pay us at all. But, you know, since Ocean's 8, you know, Baileys, yeah, it goes without say saying no, Say no more. The connection there. So, <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So, this movie, is, is it a spoiler to say it's a remake? I don't think so. I think these films have kind of established that they, they sort of follow a certain formula. Yeah, yeah. It, and, and this the formula is the, the first Ocean's Eleven's Eleven movie. Mm-hmm. It's almost, uh, well, I don't want to say it's exactly the same, but it's heavily inspired to the point of mimicry. Yes, yeah. And because it's not just really a, a, a remake, it is kind of a sequel to it. Well, it, yeah. It, it's set in the same universe as the one, as the Steven Soderbergh films, um, of which, have to be honest, I... She's his sister. <laughs> Yeah, she's Danny Ocean's sister, mm-hmm. the, the sister that doesn't get mentioned ever. Or maybe do, maybe she does. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Just... I, I watched Ocean's Eleven on a plane, mm-hmm. um, like a week ago. Great movie, and then I fell asleep during Ocean's Twelve. Not because it was bad, just because I was on a plane. I was really tired. Um, so there's that. There's a story for you. <laughs> there you go. Was at home to enjoy. Yes, and I I've tried watching the first one. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fallen asleep twice, so <laughs> I will come back to it though. I try. I'm sure you will. I will. I, I'll try not to fall asleep again. But All right. Any, well, let's. I feel like we've gone a long time without even talking about our rating. Oh yeah. Okay. Let's c- follow the tradition. Worth a watch. Ocean's Eight. Three, two, one. I, I guess. guess. No. I thought I was sure you were gonna say no. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I was so sure you were gonna say no. Yeah. I thought we were gonna have something different for once. Uh, well, see, like, I was watching, like, during the time we were watching it, I mean, it was, it was fine. The what it, what time. it is, is an inferior Ocean's Eleven. So I was thinking about, I was thinking about the film and I was thinking about who I could recommend it to. And it's just like, it's made, it's made for women. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it's, but it's not made for women, women. It's made for like what Hollywood thinks women want. So it's like all pretty dresses and and they... You know, the plan is to steal the jewels and, like, all that stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, okay. But this movie already happened. It already happened. And it had George Clooney, who was way more charismatic than Sandra Bullock. Like, yeah. But that I guess it's kind of unfair because no, no, one's, no one's more charismatic than George Clooney in that role. Like, no one. <laughs> There's no one there. No, no, one. no. Yeah, Sandra Bullock in this movie, her character, anyway, is very subdued very like withdrawn the entire time it's always like giving always giving the impression that she knows she's in control of everything but you know that she knows everything but it's it's only going to be revealed later and every time it's like yep i've still got control of everything and it's it's hard to latch on to her (laughs) emotionally there's not really much happening there yeah especially because like this the movie starts with her in being released from prison in evening wear, which is the same as Ocean's Eleven. And you're just kind of like, oh, okay, well, this has happened before. Mm. But I suppose maybe perhaps it's not meant for people who have seen and enjoyed the original. Because what it is, like, it, it's quite effective at doing what it wants to do, which is just be a fun movie that you, you, you go out and see with the, with the gals or the boys. Mm-hmm. Although there weren't many boys in our cinema, so it's not really... <laughs> yeah. It, it, but so much of... It's very... It follows the tradition of the other Oceans movies of what I've seen of what I've seen of them, very hyper stylized. Which is like half of the first one. It's yeah, about three quarters of the first one, I would say. Um, I would say that the style feels forced in in, in that film. Yeah, I don't know if you didn't noticed me at the beginning. I was like laughing just how 
like just blaring I always, the. Mu- I always noticed you. Yeah, I oh, thank you. How just how blaring the the music was. Yeah, the music was very strange. Yeah, I, yeah. The I don't want to keep bringing it back to Ocean's Eleven, but Ocean's Eleven's music had like a very understated kind of suave nature to it, whereas like it kind of felt like Ocean's Eight soundtrack felt like a bit like maybe something you get in like a phone poker app or something. Yeah, it's really like on the nose and like a bit <clears throat> in your face. It's definitely copying that style that uh, I think Steven Soderbergh established because, yeah. like, even though I haven't seen uh, all the Ocean's movies, just comparing what I've seen from Ocean's 8, uh, sorry, Ocean's 11, um, and I can see similarities between the, another movie that Steven Soderbergh did, uh, Out of Sight. Ah, yeah. And <laughs> those, the way he uses music is very synonymous, like, with his style, I would say. And so this kind of felt... Like, they were just like mimicry. recreating that, yeah. Yeah, because it, it feels like mimicry. Yeah. Like, the whole movie does. Well, because it's, it is it is mimicry, and they're not trying to really hide that, but mm. it's it, it feels like a cheap knockoff. Yeah. That, mm. A very expensive cheap knockoff. Yeah. That, I don't know how much it was, but I'm sure it was expensive. It was about, like, 40 million, I want to say. Yeah. I think. So, yeah, it's definitely... Um, I mean, I think there are going to be comparisons to... Ghostbusters, obviously. Yeah, because the the concept of the reboot is the same. It's just yeah. the same story, but with women this time. Yeah, and I, th- I do think that this is more successful than um, Ghostbusters. Have you seen Ghostbusters? Uh, the original or the remake? The remake. Remake. I, <laughs> I've seen, like, up until the last ten minutes of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want to buy some Pringles now? <laughs> I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Because <laughs> um, that film... I didn't know you'd seen that. I didn't yeah. know that you'd actually... I thought you were... It was talked about so much, I was like, okay, I just need to see what all the fuss is about. And bad? It's, yeah, it's very... It's not... It's very different to the original. I think that's what pissed off a lot of people. They had so, put so much faith in that film with all the marketing costs and it, it bombed. And I think it's because, like, they were clearly trying to put a an, ov- a hu- an overtly comedic style to it which yeah, was yeah whereas the original was much more a combination of comedy and and horror and sci-fi and they didn't have the star power that Ocean's 8 has yes because you got Sandra Bullock in there you got Clay Cl- yeah, <laughs> Bland Clay Blanchett <laughs> Blanch- Kate Blanchett Kate yep mm-hmm. uh, you've got Rihanna yes she's uh she, how, what would you say her performance is? She's a very strange character. I'll, I'll give you that much. She, she plays is. this hacker who's just like very overdone. There's this one scene, the scene where she hacks into some guy's webcam and it shows up on her screen and it's like <laughs> blah, 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 dot JPEG. And it's like a moving image. Mm. And it's like, you know, are you aware of what a JPEG is? Like, yeah. There's, that's what... <clears throat> I think if you can, this is the type ah. of film that is not going to hold up to scrutiny. <laughs> Any scrutiny at all. Yeah, I mean, she was a weird character, but so many of them were weird. And that's... This film, like, coming back to Ghostbusters, it's going to succeed, I think, more than Ghostbusters, purely because it is... It's what you'd expect. It's, it's like a yeah. very safe retread of what's been established in the Oceans franchise. And it works. It yeah. Just... It's, it's light and fluffy. It's very... It's effortless to watch. Um, so easy. I was enjoying myself. Fun. Yeah, it, it went on quick. I have to say, though, for the main I was, set pieces, I had a good time for sure. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd say after. Uh, <laughs> are we going to get into spoilers? Um, <laughs> there's um, up until a certain character shows up. I was after, when that character did show up. I was like, I was, I'm ready for this film to end. Yeah, there was a certain point where I was like, I'm checked out. Um, yeah. And I they, like, they went yeah. a bit further. They went a bit further than Ocean's Eleven did in terms of the aftermath. Okay, yeah. Which, it, um, it, it reminded me a bit of um, because I saw last year Logan Lucky. Uh-huh. That's a sort of film. Yeah, another one, and that sort of has a similar. I feel like that <laughs> this structure of storytelling is very much Soderbergh. Well, yeah. Because yeah, um, Logan Lucky followed a very similar process like establishing the highest carrying out the highest and then there was a uh, a certain amount dedicated to the aftermath in that film which was similar to this oceans movie i felt yeah okay but that aftermath i i it had a very predictable like twist if you want to call it that as to like who else is involved in this heist and i didn't actually predict that really i felt (laughs) a bit silly but 
I thought, yeah, there was there were certain things where certain things were said, and I thought that it was <coughs> ignorance instead of mischievousness. Mischief. <laughs> mischievousness. Mischievous, yeah, whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Doesn't, yes. <laughs> it doesn't, no, you it know doesn't. what I mean. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't predict that twist, so I'm a big stupid dumb dumb head. Okay. Well, we'll talk That's about that a little bit later. We'll, talk, we'll get into that <laughs> a little <laughs> um, bit later on. Let's talk about the <laughs> performances. So. <laughs> Yes, you right? I'm coughing. No, I'm good. Yeah, he's great. He's coughing. So yeah, performances. Um, yeah, like we said earlier, Sandra Bullock is kind of. It's just her character. It's just always appearing smug. I felt she's ample. Yeah, yeah. she's. I want that. What does that word mean? Because it's used to describe breasts in that movie. And I was mm. thinking about. it, and I was like, doesn't it, it kind of means like like apt like. Good, like fine for the circumstance fine. Is adequate that, yeah <laughs> yeah so like but it, in, when you say it about breasts it kind of has connotations of like positive <laughs> whereas it should just be like yeah she's got <laughs> <laughs> so oh how long did it take us to start talking about boobs <laughs> <laughs> not too soon too soon um, anyway um yeah so performances i thought anne hathaway was good she was my favorite she, she had was, good performances yeah. um well, I, I like liked she, yeah. Aquafina for a bit. Aquafina? Aquafina? Aquaf- Aquafina. Whatever her f- ridiculous <laughs> name is. You thought she was alright? I didn't, like, I enjoyed her. I was like, okay. Yeah? Yeah. What is she? What is she? Is she... She's like a comedy rapper, YouTube personality type person. Okay. I definitely got that vibe. And like, yeah. it was... Yeah. She was fine to me. She was, like, semi-interesting. I was... <laughs> Uh, who else was there? Who else was there? Who else was there? There was Mindy Kaling. She Mindy Kaling, really... who was nothing. There was nothing happening there. Yeah, she really wasn't in it that much. I wonder if she got like heavily chopped and screwed or something. Yeah, I'm like by that I mean edited out, <laughs> which I'm happy with because I don't like her. It's yeah. There's eight. Well, there's eight of them. Not and... as a person, as like the character. Mm. She's typecast into a yeah annoying role often. Well, like, you saw the, the original recently. How did you find the difference between that and this in terms of balancing the, the different characters? Well, in the original, there's more characters. Mm. But they do a fantastic job setting them all up. It's really great. In the original, it's, it's that sequence where they collect the gang. I lo- I'm a sucker for gang assembly. <laughs> I think I've, we talked about this in Deadpool too. I just, like, <laughs> getting the gang together, everyone's got different skills. I'm like, great do mm. it like um i remember in ocean 11 there's a sequence on a train um where they pick up matt damon's character who's a pickpocket and like the train moves and he like they show him steal the guy's wallet and it's just like really subtle really nice thing mm. whereas in this in, in this movie the uh, aquafine is just like i'm stealing his watch and i'm <laughs> playing with cars and it's just like okay well it's a bit more clunky isn't yeah it, it really <clears throat> there's also it, the movie as a whole is more clunky. There's certain things where, um, for example, there's a big... Con- let's just say, so let's say spoilers now. <laughs> okay, let's go... Let's, let's do it, spoilers. Okay, spoilers, 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 spoilers. Yeah. Okay. Um, the, they replicate the main conflict in... Uh, well, no, it's not the main conflict, I suppose, but in Ocean's Eleven, when Rusty, who was Brad Pitt, finds out that George Clooney is doing this partly to get back at his ex or not get get his ex back. It's Julia Roberts, right? Yeah, Julia yeah. Roberts. All, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, 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 <laughs> yeah, so they address that strangely because... Okay, all what I really noticed in this movie was that the dialogue, it was just a lot less smooth. When, when um, Kate Blanchett confronts Sandra Bullock about it, she's like... It might ruin everything, and she's like, "It won't," and she's just like, oh, "Okay, that's fine." <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she's got, she has huge powers of convincing <laughs> people to just believe her. Just saying, "Yep, it'll be fine." Yep, good. It felt written the dialogue. I yeah, think. yeah, well, it, it did feel written because mm. it was written poorly, and that's the only time when it feels written. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's just no nuance to it. You didn't really get the sense that they were like old you know, partners who had done this countless times. It yeah. was kind of like a, just... It didn't... F- hello. Yeah. <clears throat> it never felt like the characters existed before the cameras started rolling. Yeah. You know, like, it's just... This thing that is like, let's all be flashy, and it, that's fine to an extent, but it just doesn't immerse you in the heist as well. Yeah, I agree. Um, I was wondering, did they establish, like, Helena Bottom Carter's character? Yeah. 
She she was the fashion designer. Like obviously she's a pivotal role in the heist. Did they was there like anything to say that she would just be like, "Yep, I'm going to go in on, on this heist." Um, she was in debt to the IRS. So okay, that was all right. So yeah, so that's that she needed money. But um, the question there is just like, she must be so dumb to be like, yes, I'll be the person who insists on bringing this diamond necklace out that's going to get stolen. Yeah. You know, like, it's just like, I'll be that person. And no one will, no one questioned her. So <laughs> I guess everyone else is in the movie too. But like, yeah. who's the one person who insisted on the necklace being there? Mm-hmm. She did. <laughs> and then it's just like oh we won't even speak to her yeah, yeah it's not necessary I'm just like that's a very smart career move and like the the movie doesn't make a point of it because they have to get away with it so foolish um mm. another thing that I want to talk about in difference to the Ocean's Eleven mm. is um Danny Ocean in Ocean's Eleven doing it for the money also doing it to get his ex back slash get back at his ex's new squeeze but it's not a malicious thing it's not really like a he's not like i want to do this because i hate you Mm -hmm. or i want you to suffer he's like i'm doing this because you know i want to be on top that's it like but in this film she's like i'm gonna frame my ex-boyfriend because he did this there's no character growth there it's just i'm gonna get revenge and spite yeah and i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna be spiteful and it's just like what Mm -hmm. like you kind of expect at the end like Danny Ocean would have left a note being like, this could have been a diamond or something like that instead of putting the actual diamond in his pocket and it's going to great lengths to put him in prison. Mm-hmm. But, you know... Yeah. Maybe, so the, maybe the producers were like, yeah, we're going to spite Paul. They'll like this. <laughs> <laughs> I just never... Yeah, with her character, Sandra Bullock, I just never got that sense of urgency or sense of, like, any sort of emotion. Even, like, <laughs> like positive or negative, it was always, like... Yeah, it'll, it'll work. It'll let's do this. Let's, yeah, let's do fine. this. Yeah, let's, let's do it. <laughs> I I did enjoy the sequence at the hotel. Um. Um. When when she like, finagles herself into a room, at the start of the film when she's like, oh, I overheard you saying. Room. Oh right, yeah, so yeah, I'm that was socially yeah. Socially engineer this and yeah, that was cool. It was a good like indication of her skills. Yeah, it was a good way to set it up. Yeah. Um. And she just starts like talking German and wearing a blonde wig and being generally weird and having like a really intense moment with Heidi Klum that doesn't come back at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's like, just like, oh, like, like your dress. Like, yeah. It's just like, yep, okay, great. I have to say, I really did like Anne Hathaway in that film. She was probably like, like her ample bosoms. Yeah, she was very, she was <laughs> quite <laughs> supple. Quote from the movie, not being sexist. Yes. Just. just yes. Yeah. <laughs> she was good. I'm not a huge fan of her usually, like in, in terms of acting. But, but that, that, I felt like she was the only one I actually enjoyed who seemed to actually be, like, enjoying her performance a lot. Yeah, she had... There was, like, more nuance. She had, like, a good emotional range. Mm. Yeah. Um, so, uh, what did you think of uh, J- James Corden? I liked him. Yeah? I thought he was better than I was expecting. Yeah, yeah he wasn't... I was expecting him to be the silly man. Mm. But he was being... Less than a silly man. Yeah. I just felt... He was the character that I was referring to. Yeah. Because uh, he shows up about in the like last 20 to 30 minutes yeah, of the film. Yeah, it's kind of like, oh, I was having a good time, but now there's like another thing that's yeah. happening. Like, come on, don't... I don't uh, yeah. do it. It's, that's the thing as well. The movie's not over... It's only an hour and 50 minutes, so... Uh, <laughs> but by the time the heist finishes, it's only been like an hour and a half or so. And I was like, oh, okay, there's actually more of this film to go. Um, and I just didn't really find that. I never ever got. This, I really have to emphasize when I say it's like light and fluffy. There's never any sense that their heist, even when it comes into a problem, it never feels like it's not insurmountable. It always feels like, yep, boom, it's taken care of. There's never any like real tension built as to whether they're actually going to get caught. What do you think? I'm just thinking about it. Um... Yeah, I wasn't really, fe- I wasn't feeling tense at any moment. I wasn't like, oh no, they're gonna. Because mm. I didn't have any doubt that they were gonna succeed. Because I was like, up until this point, it's just been a carbon copy of Ocean's Eleven, and they, they yeah, they work it out in that. So and that really goes to show, like, you can only recommend this to people that actually are like fans of the franchise, <laughs> if anything. But I, I mean, the majority of people. I recommend like it this. to most girls that I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't recommend it. If they mm. ask me if they, if I if I 
would recommend it, I would say yes. Yeah. But it wouldn't be like, hey, go see Ocean's 8. It's great. True. Which rhymes with 8. <laughs> Coincident. It does. Coincidence. I'm, I'm just... What, what, what... Is this film really... Like, why did they choose this franchise? Because it's a good excuse to have, like, an ensemble cast. Mm. I guess so. We'll see. <laughs> it's fun. Like, it's fun. Yeah, it's fine. It's adequate. It's it's harmless. It's, it's harmless. All the technical the technical side of it is competent. It's very stylish. It's clear it's it's all derivative though to me. The the use of the music, the Yeah. The performances I think are what let it down the most. Yeah, they, uh, they, that and the writing. <laughs> the script definitely like they could have like with that star power, I mean, especially with because, yeah, I like Sandra Bullock. I like Kate Blanchett. Yeah. I, and, I mean, I feel like some of the other cast members, even though they're great, it's kind of a gimmick to cast them. Yeah. So, like, Rihanna's fine. <laughs> she's, she's fine. She's fine. She's very pretty. Yeah. She's, and like, she, she'll bring in an audience. And the wardrobe department had a great time with her. Mm-hmm. Which is good. You know? Yeah. I like it when people have a good time. Yeah. I mean, is there someone we're forgetting? Sarah Paulson. She's, we haven't really spoken about oh, her. Oh, yeah, Sarah Paulson. She's also, I like her as an actress I, as well. I found her intro scene in which she's blending like 20 different green powders into a smoothie <laughs> while her kid is just like slamming himself into walls. <laughs> I laughed at that. That was probably one of the couple of moments in the film where I was like, that's funny. I yeah. don't know if the film was trying to be that funny though, so it's not really like a condemnation. But Yeah, true. I there enjoy it. There weren't many scenes where I was like actually like laughing with the film. It was more sort of like unintentionally laughing. Yeah, there were some really silly things. I'm trying to remember. Mm. Wait, what did I write down? I've probably only... I don't know, but... Um, I only wrote down like two things. They... Yeah, I've, I've said yeah. that. Oh, good, good. And they had to include the um, <laughs> the, the, the uh, Asian guy from the first one. The Asian guy. Yeah. Yeah, the old cameos of the two, two characters from the first movie. Yes. Which were... Um, which are nice, like, sure, they're there. It's, yeah, I, this <laughs> definitely treats the other, the other films with more respect than Ghostbusters did. Really? Yeah. Because in Ghostbusters, like, all the original cast show up in cameos and different, different characters that, like, completely <laughs> go against what their original characters <laughs> were set up to be. Well, is it in, meant to be in the same universe or no? Um, I think it is. I think so. But yeah. it's essentially the same, the same story as the, as the original. And that's similar to this, except this doesn't try to, for better or worse, doesn't try to transform the film into something else. It's just, it's a safe retread of, of what we yeah. already know. Like it's the whole, safe. that whole trope at the end, which has become synonymous with heist films, like with the whole like, but wait, we didn't tell you everything. We're going to go back and show you what actually happened. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, that to me just gets a bit tiresome. Like now, it never. I really... like that sequence. I wish they'd shown it at the time of the heist. They did a lot of sh- like. There's a lot of like showing. It's just. So it's like a cheap way to be like, get make the audience surprised. It's like here's the thing that you never would have expected because you had no reason to. But now we're showing it to you, so be surprised about it. Yeah. It's like using non-linear storytelling to, to make something that is just normal a surprise. Yeah. Star Wars. <laughs> Yeah, he's Luke's dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you'd started from the prequels, it wouldn't have been a surprise. <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah, just that that trope combined with the fact that they're having like narration over it as well. It's just very. Get it. Here's the movie. Get it. Look at it. Yeah. Enjoy it. But it's fine. It's it's so you've said it's fine like maybe twenty times. Yeah. Do you think it is fine? I think it's fine. I think it might be fine. Like it's hard to get. It's hard to feel negative about it. It's hard to feel positive. It's just, it's functional. I was. I felt overall po- overall positive about it. But the reason that I get, I would give it an I guess worth a watch instead of a yes worth a watch is just because Ocean's Eleven exists and is superior and pretty much. Every way except Rihanna isn't in it. <laughs> and, you know, Rihanna's great, but Casey Affleck, mm-hmm. Brad Pitt, George Clooney, Matt Damon. the Asian guy, <laughs> <laughs> Matt Damon. Yeah. The Asian guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sold. I'm He's sold. Too, though, to be fair. Yeah, true. But, um, 
I mean, the pro- I was, I had, like, yeah, production design was good. I liked the whole look of the where the heist takes place. Well, that's just the Met Gala, isn't it? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and, like, like, they had actual footage. Was that the, mm. from the Met Gala? Like, they just bring cinema cameras to the Met Gala and film? No, no. But like, that whole insight. Kim K is there and mm. designer. I, I honestly don't know, but what I mean that. What do, you, what do you mean you don't know? That what you, if it was at the Met Gala? If it was oh, at the Met Gala, yeah. so you didn't know about designer? No, I know. You know about it? Yeah. Panda. Yeah. Panda. Panda. Mm. Panda. I, I, I feel like you're disagreeing with me. I don't feel like you know who designer is. <laughs> I got bras in Atlanta. Sure. Are we gonna move on from this? Yeah. Thing? Sure. Yeah. Let's move on. yeah. <laughs> um, sorry, I was talking about the that interior where. The, that room where all the jewels were kept, that blue room. Yeah. That looked nice. Yeah, that was that was that that's good. Nice. Yeah. The, with the moat, the water in the ground. Yeah. Yeah, that was a nice looking room. Yeah. Um, Remember that one shot that, we, that which was in the <laughs> in the actual museum that was following each character, followed one guard and then followed another girl. No, I don't really remember that. That was like the one shot that sort of stuck stuck out to me. I mean, overall the there cinematography was, one, there was, was nice. There was one shot that stuck out to me with, was when they were in the cab. And it, camera was kind of going around the outside and I was kind of like oh this is cool yeah like Helena Bonham Carter was going having a bit of a something I don't know <laughs> who knows <laughs> yeah. who knows what those characters were doing but they were doing something they were sure they were <laughs> doing something they were heisting it away it's yeah ah oh, gosh it's hard to get enthusiastic for this film yeah it's really it's really it's just, just it's really just a movie. It's there. We're not the dem- yeah. Want. We're not the peak demographic. <laughs> so yeah, if you got nothing to do, check it out. I'd highly recommend. <laughs> like it's at least it's at least good enough to for if a if a girl goes to see it and she brings a boyfriend, he won't have a bad time. Which is like it's it's all you need from that kind of movie. Mm. Like no one's going to this expecting it to be great. Yeah. Well, I don't know, maybe some people are. Maybe. It'll definitely, like, do well, I think. Yeah. Well enough. Well enough. Although, maybe not. <laughs> like, it's not really competing with anything. I was going to say, if you haven't... <laughs> the, the other film that's being released with it is Hereditary, and... Yeah, you should see that. How can a film be Hereditary? That's the name of the film. Oh. Yeah. Review for that coming soon. Oh, is it? Yeah. What did you think of it? Spoilers? Spoilers. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> but see it. It's shit. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks. <Jack. laughs> <It's>, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is shaving up to be our shortest podcast yet. How long have we been going? 28 minutes. Uh, mm. Is there anything else we can talk about regarding Ocean's 8, the fantastic, innovative new piece of cinema um, from Gary Ross? Mm. Gary Ross, what else did he yeah. done? Uh, he did... Um, I don't know, actually. Let's have a look. I think he did um, the last... Maybe I think he did some of the Hunger Games movies. Oh, well, they're great. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> they're fine. What has like he done? Hunger Games movies. He did the first Hunger Games. That's oh, well, that's the best one. Is it? Well, it's the only one I've watched. Okay. The Free State of Jones. Is that... That's Matthew McConaughey. Well, no, I've... Yeah, I know. That movie got panned immensely. Yeah. Like, the most panned I've ever seen a movie get panned. Yeah, so he hasn't really done anything that's, like, crazy, like, wildly acclaimed or anything like that. Still hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> it's Still it's hasn't. functional. This film is... <laughs> It's, like, not too hard to make a movie when there's a blueprint of it already out. Yeah. And I'm sure there's the, they'll be announcing a sequel to it. Really? Ocean's 9? Well, like, it's quite clear that they were very strategic in which, like, number they chose. Why do you say that? So that they can have another trilogy. Oh, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. they're making Ocean's 9, Ocean's 10. Yeah. And... Ocean's... I mean... 9... It, like, I don't know... That, like, like, where can you go from here? <laughs> like, just have an, the exact same heist with these. Like, I don't like these characters enough to want to see them more. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, in Ocean's not, Eleven, yeah. they, they have the guy come after them in the next movie. Right. And he's like, you need to pay me back or else you all get 
you know, you get fucked up by me and my big strong men. Fair enough. Um, but yeah, so they have to do more heists to get that money mm. so that they, you know, do that. Um, but in this film, there's not really that one person who's been wronged, except right. for the, the ex-boyfriend. But you'd think he'd be in jail for life. Yeah. You'd think he'd just go to jail forever. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, sorry, we think that you stole a $150 million bracelet, necklace, necklace. <laughs> so you're going to jail forever. So see you later. You could. I don't think Peace that, pro- yeah, I don't think that would go that same route that Ocean's 12 did. I'd, I'd think that that would just Why? probably... Because it's just easier, I would think, to just do another heist. A new heist. Or is it easy to just copy another movie like they did for the first one? It could go either way. We're going to be saying, probably having the same discussion with Jurassic World next week. Oh, God. Jurassic World. (laughs) Can't wait for that one. Yeah, it's going to be outstanding. Man, those trailers, they just don't look good. Yeah. They're just straight up, like, I don't find anything, like, I guess you need to be excited about dinosaurs. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, the trailer is keen for Jurassic World. So, so I don't know. Maybe maybe I just need one dinosaur movie now. It's out of my system. <laughs> <laughs> what do you reckon? One dinosaur movie every ten years. Just like one and done. You know, that's how it goes. It's, yeah, that's how it be. Mm-hmm. That's how it do. How, how done it, done it? All right. Um, I I think let's wrap it up there. Okay. Yeah. Because right, that's that's all. We've dedicated thirty minutes to Ocean's Eight. That's as much as we need. Mm-hmm. Basically, our thoughts are: if you watch it. You won't be upset by it, but you probably you should also it. not go see it unless you really like heist movies in general. If you really like heist movies, it'll be fine. But if you really like heist movies, you probably have a high standard for heist movies, so it probably mm. won't hit that standard. But it'll be another heist movie. It's like kind of like if you're addicted to cocaine, you like you'll take any cocaine as long as it's like. <laughs> it's like still cocaine you know what I mean not that I I've never done cocaine but I'm assuming that's what it's like yeah it's very comparable com- comparable cocaine yeah let's go let's go let's go, right. let's go right now right. <laughs> uh, anyway thanks for watching slash listening to all three of you who did yes uh, maybe four maybe four we're growing we're growing we get every day um, if you liked it um, leave a comment down below down mm-hmm. there in the comment section. It's weird how YouTubers do this. They're like, oh, down below. It's just like, you're pointing, we're pointing at a table right yeah. now. Yeah, you can't comment on the table. Just comment where... The... Just comment in the comment section. You just know Just speak to us, please. We're fucking lonely. <laughs> we're fu- <laughs> we just want to know if anyone even made it this far, honestly. <laughs> Does anyone want to come to Ocean's 8 with us? And if you did see Ocean's 8, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Yeah. Like, just let us know. Just Did you like it? Maybe you didn't like it. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you did like it, by now, you would be a bit embarrassed because of how much we've said that it was kind of average, but (laughs) that's okay. But it's fine. We respect it. Like the movie, it's fine. It's totally fine. Rihanna's in it. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to keep repeating that because she's in it. She's one of the superior parts of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, that's a worth watch podcast. Our next one will be for Jurassic World, so keep an eye out for that. We're going to go see that movie, and then we're going to talk to you about it. Good. It is going to be good. Yeah. You know what? It's going to be great. Excellent. All right. Um, I've been Scott. And I'm still Tom. He's still Tom. <laughs> and that's it for Worth a Watch Podcast, the only movie podcast on YouTube. Yep. Goodbye. <laughs> See ya. The only movie podcast on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's it. <laughs>